Anyway, so I'll be quick. Uh, all I was saying was I, I thought we could do more on mental on mental health, um, and I uh, I think we could also perhaps if we're going to think about special topics, maybe integrate um, what we can say generally statewide about policy um, regarding to stops whether it pertained to, to training uh, for LGBTQ LGBTQ LGBTQT and gender issues or or mental health. Um, uh, and I, I just think if we incorporated that, it would it would help uh, contextualize a lot of what we're seeing and, and also aid the public in interpreting the, the data patterns. Sorry for, for getting kicked off the call. No problem. Thanks for coming back. Uh, others? Well, I wanted to make the comment as a, as a new year or batch of data is coming in that it's a very unusual year because of the pandemic. Um, and so it might be that um, when we're saying, oh, maybe there's a question we can drill down further or um, parse the data or um, beyond what was done in the last report, that it might be that we're actually finding useful to focus on the 2019 data still for that. So just a side. A side comment, um, as more years of data are collected too, we may discover it's useful to see are there trends over time or, or changes uh, that different agencies are um, manifesting, but it's going to be very difficult to do that for this, for this most recent set. That is, I'm expecting that we're going to see a lot of the stop number, a lot of things are going to drop, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's, I mean, that may be the impact of the pandemic rather than changes in policy. Um, I also wanted to put out as a strand, just or something for us to keep in the back of our minds um, concerning the accuracy of data. I mean, the RIPA, this is an incredibly rich data set. Um, there have been um, these reports we saw, one from the LA um, Inspector General last year, comparing body camera data to uh, various for officer reports, and they're not aligning as well as we might expect. And so, um, so something for us to keep in mind too will be, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a great research question in mind. I'm not sure how we probe this. The data we have still tells a profound story, but thinking about accuracy of data collection efforts um, each year. And I, I haven't, I'm not up on the latest story, but there is a report in the LA Times, I think today, um, about some underrepresentation from the LAPD in terms of numbers of stops reported this year. That I would just, in the recent months, that's not the RIPA data. That may become from more casual reporting, um, and it's not necessarily held to the same standard of the data collection that DO, the data the DOJ is receiving. But anyway, I just I guess I'm saying I want us to be mindful of what's being reported in the press, and you know, keeping an eye on does the RIPA data still look robust enough to draw inferences from? I think it, I think it does, but I want us to be mindful of the accuracy or potential for misaccuracy. I'm not sure exactly how we should address that in our next steps in reporting, but I wanted to put that out there. And we should be also looking at other areas that were uh, that we'd like more research or information on outside of just the two or three that were presented this afternoon. If there are other subject areas that we think would be important to include in the report, we should also be thinking about the, those as well. My question would be, how accurate the the meta and again i'm i'm speaking for my agency uh we use the axon cameras which uh uh records a ton of metadata and i know that there's a cost uh, obviously there's a cost attached to that but i do know that our data that we capture um is it's not necessarily inputted by the individual officer that uh, the CAD system that we use to generate calls for service and everything else like that is linked to the cameras. So there's 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 less play, I guess is the word I want to use, uh, with regards to the the information that you're capturing. And I don't know, you know, the different camera systems that are across, you know, from from Eureka all the way down to San Ysidro. I don't know which ones they're using, but I do know that uh, some of those the the technology on the cameras is pretty good. At, at capturing the data, um, in addition to the GPS and the cars and things like that. Um, um, and then the CAD system itself that says on this date, this time, Officer Hampton conducted a vehicle stop 
you know, and then he cleared that call at this particular time, stuff like that. That I mean, there, there, the data is out there. I think uh, for the purposes of this group, it would be trying to capture it and trying to figure out the 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 best way to capture that to get the the highest amount of accuracy for something like that. So maybe down the road, there's a way to take some small subset of the RIPA data or from a particular agency and and compare it to the reporting coming from the type of, you know, what you're talking about, the metadata from body cameras, just as an integrity check right. on, on the RIPA data. Yeah. I, I agree that 2020, for a lot of statistical purposes, uh, is the year of the asterisk. Um, that there is just really, it, you can't really benchmark data in 2020. I agree with Dr. Kadavi that we really need to be looking at 2019 uh, if we're looking to do a deeper dive of the data. Um, I think for a more accurate picture of what's of what's happening and. Uh, understanding mental health uh, issues surrounding uh, the stops, Dr. Raphael, is, is equally as important uh, in across all spectrums. Um, y yes, we're looking in this particular case at the LGBTQ community, and I think that's important, and also to expand that um, to other areas as well. I know that DOJ staff is work working on that. Um, I think that the most recent report, I guess that's the 2020 report, um, looked at a lot of different areas in an area when I took a deeper dive in the appendix that I would like to have seen uh, flushed out some more is, I touched on this a little bit earlier already, but how does the data reflect our calls for service? Uh, those types of incidences where our community is asking for the police to respond right. and we are, we are breaking down our stop data based on traffic stops and other self-initiated activity. Um, and in my review of the data, um, it showed that our calls for service, um, that we are being requested to calls for service and, and, and contacts that have a greater um, disparity, if you would, or disproportionality uh, based on uh, the demographics of our community. And so I think that it's important that our report call that out and, and identify that. Um, and so uh, I think that's an area that I would like for our uh, committee to recommend the board consider. Um, in our 2021 report and analysis, and even go back uh, and show a h historical data for the last couple of years, uh, since that hasn't been included in, in, in prior reports. Any uh, additional topics for consideration? I, I just, I guess I have a question. Um, do we think maybe there's something specific about COVID that we should be doing? Like, should there be a one-time what's happened over the last year? And how have things changed and what have we learned from this pandemic? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that would be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it would be related to um, so stop data, I mean, maybe once we see the data, we can look at it and understand it and, and see if we can assign uh, COVID implications to some of the results once we see the results. Um, I think, and I think uh, uh, Officer Hampton would agree, I think what we'll see as a profession is a dramatic reduction in number of stops, whether it's from the Highway Patrol, LAPD, other wave one, wave two, wave three agencies, um, just based on uh, the, the nature of policing for the last 10 months or so. Oh, yeah, um, Chief, uh, absolutely correct. I'm looking at right now, uh, we call it a CAPS report. It's the annual um, um, analysis of calls for service, uses of force, uh, part one crimes, uh, um, uh, traffic collisions, officer involved traffic collisions. And I'm looking, it looks like, we're about 25 to 28% less um, um, activity overall. As I'm looking at the different things, front counter reports, online reports, um, 911 calls, business calls, all of those are trending down as I'm looking at the data that we have here. So 
I, I would agree with you, sir, that that's, uh, that's probably going to be uh, across the board, not just Anaheim. I think so. Um, are there other uh, specific research topics to consider? If not, we'll go ahead and open up the public comment. Uh, so are my colleagues uh, ready, to, ready to move on to public comment? Okay, All right. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and open up the meeting for public comment and we'll do this uh, as we have in prior committee meetings, uh, starting by geographic region. Um, and since uh, historically Southern California seems to have uh, the most number of people uh, that are speaking at our, at our committee meetings, why don't we start down south? Uh, and so we'll start with uh, Southern California. And uh, DOJ staff, I understand what's, if someone would like to speak, just un do they identify themselves in the chat? Do they unmute? What's the best way to do this on blue jeans? People can unmute their microphone uh, and video if they desire. And we generally request uh, two minutes of public comment per person to allow okay. more commenters. Great, thank you. And then, sorry, Chief Swing, um, this is Allison. There may also, um, so at the end, we may also just want to give the opportunity if anyone is participating just by phone and not through the Blue Jeans app. So um, just want to note that when we're done with the Blue Jeans comments. Thank you for that. Allison. No. Okay, uh, public comment from Southern California. <laughs> it sounds like hearing none. How about uh, Central California? Any public comment from Central California? And hearing none, move on to Northern California. And then finally, for those that are not on the Blue Jeans app, but uh, are on the phone and would like to provide public comment. All right, Chief Swain, we have two, um, we have someone who's raised their hand, um, and we also have a question from Michelle Wittig, who says she's unable to um, work the audio. Um, and we, we also have a raised hand um, okay. from Jean Lyon. Okay, thank you for catching that. I didn't see that. Um, Hi. Yes. My name's Jean Lyon, and I just wanted to offer a suggestion for the 2020 year regarding either officer-initiated calls for service uh, or officer-initiated incidents or calls for service, either one, really. Um, when a, an arrest is typically made, at least in the prior year, officers will, you know, put down that it's either a warrant arrest or arrest with fresh charges. And because of COVID, a lot of that has changed, and they will... Now, if they especially have identified a person who might have committed a crime, um, yeah. they will refer that to the VA for charging, and the disposition and the RIPA data would be no action at that point because there's no appropriate place to say that there, there was a report taken and it was referred to the district attorney's office, where later on charges may be filed and there may be a warrant issued and the subject might be arrested. Uh, but at this point in time, at the time of the stop, there's no arrest made, there's no action other than a report being taken. There's just no appropriate way to document that in the current, currently available uh, options. So I think that you might see some decline, not only in your stops or detentions or your searches, but also in your arrest figures uh, based on that because the arrest isn't occurring at the time of the stop. Thank you. Would it be best for us to read the comment from uh, Michelle Wooding? Sure, I can do that, or if you'd like, okay. Chief, I I'm happy to do that. Um, this is right, a you. comment from Michelle Wittig. I'm just having trouble with audio. Um, the comment was, um, this question is related to agenda item three. The LA Times on February 13, 2021, reported that LAPD renews controversial stops by reporter Kevin Rector. Article refers to the racial disparities in stops 
using RIPA stop data that were publicized by LAPD Inspector General Mark Smith and the LA Times in October 2019. The article reports that the investigative stops were found to be ineffective. The recent article states that LAPD has reinstated investigative stops but maintains that their procedure is careful to be, quote, constitutional, end quote. I realize that such stops have been deemed by the U.S. Supreme Court to be constitutional. However, it is my understanding that they are forbidden by California law and that RIPA is aligned with California law. Please clarify whether LAPD is conducting stops in accord with California law. Thank you. Michelle Wittig, Santa Monica Coalition for Police Reform. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, go ahead. You have, you have a comment? Ah. Yes, I'm not sure if you have a comment. If not, uh, would you mind muting your uh, audio? Response to the comment from Michelle Wittig. Um, the question about clarifying whether LAP is conducting stops in accordance with California law, I don't know that's necessarily the purview of our committee to be able to, to uh, comment on that. So is there any other public comment for the committee? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Um, I was just thinking, you know, you guys mentioned whether COVID would um, affect the analysis in one way or the other. And one thing I was thinking of was that because we had, you know, different shelter in place and stay at home orders being passed, that has the potential to create natural experiments that you could use. Because while those were in place, there was less commuting. So, you know, stops might more accurately reflect the local population demographics. So I think that would be one area to consider while doing your analysis. I think I think that's a great point. Um, that clearly the tourism and employment sectors have changed in the last year, and uh, the data might be more reflective of a local, regional community as opposed to a, a broader transient tourism or employment-based community. Is there any other public comment? We'll go ahead and close public comment and move on to discussion of next steps. And I'll turn that back to the committee. So, um, Chief Swing, this would be next steps with regards to our specific uh, um, recommendations for sub uh, sub or, or more detailed analysis of specific topics? Yes, that's correct. I believe it's uh, time for us to um, kind of formalize our request uh, mm -hmm. that will go to the board for, uh, I guess, a full approval, if you would, about um, the research topics for the 2021 report. So, so in, in my notes, I, I wrote down a few things that, that people raised, so mental health, I guess uh, maybe, I, I don't know if this is the right way to, to characterize it, but bias by proxy, uh, comparing um, calls for service with officer initiated, and then thinking a little bit harder about uh, comparing um, data that we might be able to get from other sources to rip data, rip a data for, for quality control to summarize uh, um, Lily and Edgar's uh, comments. and. I don't know if I missed something, because I, I also fell off the call for about five minutes. We we waited for your we waited patiently for your return, <laughs> Dr. Raphael. <laughs> so you did not, you did not miss anything uh, while working. Transfixed out. waiting. Yes. I'm sure that was an awkward five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to maybe re-emphasize, and and the and the board, in fact, approved this. I think last year that this focus on, um, which is already in play now, on consent 
based searches. Um, maybe searches where consent was one of the factors, but searches where consent was the only basis. Um, and so we've already seen in the last annual report the first layers of this, um, but then maybe carving out further to compare the equipment violation stops or moving violations and then others, other stops to distinguish to see if, for example, pedestrians versus drivers are having different experiences. Um, because I think that may point the way to some very concrete policy recommendations. Um, and also um, continuing this focus on the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and I know we've already touched on these, but just if these are summarizing comments, mm -hmm. just to reinforce well, that. Yeah, forgive me. So we also have the, yeah, the, the two presentations we have that are, should be on our list as well. The LGBTQT and then the these, these specific types of stops. Uh, I wonder if it would be helpful. I don't know, maybe we need to do a little bit more background work on, and, and um, maybe if DOG staff could weigh in,